Hi, I'm uh, Paul Beck with, uh, with the University of Ottawa. I'm in the Department of Geography, the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. And uh, my new best friend here is Jax, who's uh, three years old. So in this particular video, I'm going to be talking about the, the Eemian, um, the end Eemian, about 118, 119,000 years ago, uh, when uh, temperatures, uh, global temperatures were perhaps as low as only 0.2 or 0.3 degrees Celsius above today's levels, and sea level was plus five to plus nine meters above today's level, and how the conditions at that time um, created these massive storms. So in this warm period, in this interglacial period, there was, uh, with uh, you know, a nine meter sea level rise, it's very likely that something on the order of half of that rise would have been from um, sourced from melt from Antarctica and the other half would be from uh, melt from Greenland or perhaps a bit more from Antarctica because a lot of the coastlines are retrogressive so they're sloping inland and they're um, very um, exposed to uh, warm ocean temperatures a kilometer or two down under melting the ice um, that's uh, grounded on the bedrock, causing ice shelf collapse and uh, nonlinear, uh, so nonlinear increase in melt rates and um, not thus nonlinear sea level rise. Um, so about about uh, so sea levels were up to nine meters higher than today at that time period. The temperatures were just slightly higher than today, um, and in in Hansen et al. Um, there's a lot, he looks at a lot of the geologic evidence on the Bahamas and Bermuda in particular to see um, what the coastlines can tell us. So what's interesting is in the Bahamas in particular, there's these ridges that were formed from continuous um, buildup of sand. And these are very large uh, V-shaped ridges as they're known as, she known as chevron ridges. And um, the interesting thing is, is that these ridges are about up to 40 meters higher than present day sea level. So in the Eemian with sea level being nine meters, almost 10 meters higher, um, these ridges are still 30 meters above the sea level at that time. And they, it is believed that these ridges were formed by enormous waves at that time. So how could such enormous waves occur? Well, with a lot of melting from Greenland, create, that would create a warm, uh, uh, that, that cold fresh water resulting from the ice would create re a regional area south of Greenland with extremely cold water temperatures. And because of the overall warming of that time period, the tropical the tropics uh, sea surface temperatures would be very high. So this would set up a very large temperature gradient in that region, which would then set up a very, very large pressure gradient, and there'd also be a large moisture gradient. So this would generate very, very large pressure differences between those regions, which would then generate very, very strong winds and very persistent winds. Um, and uh, because the Bahamas is, um, very far south, then the fetch to the Bahamas would be extremely large. So the evidence from these chevrons and also from run-up and also from large boulders that have been deposited, enormous boulders have been deposited on the ridge line in the Bahamas. And it's believed that those were put there by persistent wave action. You know, not there, there's not evidence of strong tsunamis there, but we're talking about 30 meter waves. Now, how, you know, to put 30 meter waves in perspective, um, today, you know, um, in the oceans, because of uh, constructive interference, um, there are what we call rogue waves. And these waves are up to 30, even higher, 35, 40 meters high waves. Um, and when they occur, um, very rarely, but they do occur from constructive interference processes. They take, they, they sink ships, etc. So imagine um, these um, long period um, 
long wavelength uh, waves with amplitudes of 30 meters, these wave trains um, coming down from the northeast Atlantic to the southwest, uh, being bringing, bringing 30 meter waves to the Bahamas. So what about Bermuda? Okay, so it's much further north than the Bahamas. On the north shore of Bermuda, there's these patterns, um, these geological formations that are, are similar to those in, in, in the Bahamas. They're 20 meters uh, above, above sea level, um, or, or, or about 20 to 30 meters above sea level. Um, so they'd be about 20 meters above the Eemian sea level. And of course the waves would not have built up to be as high in that region. But imagine uh, a North Atlantic full of uh, rogue wave side, you know, wave, full, of, full, of, uh, full of persistent wave trains that have magnitude similar to that of present day rogue waves. There, there would be no shipping at all in such a region. Also in Bermuda, there's indications of um, forests that were along the coastline that were basically covered up in place um, with sand. So eight to ten meter high trees that were buried completely by sand which then would then harden over time and become fossilized. So this is also evidence that um, A there was rapid sea level rise and B, B there was um, there were there were these storms um, which are beyond our uh, present experience in the Holocene. So um, so with uh, you know rapid sea level rise, there's certain regions near the sources of the ice that would where the water would get very cold, and the very large uh, temperature differences and pressure differences are very likely to generate these storms um, that are beyond our our present comprehension. In Bah in the Bahamas, there's lots of these um, there's lots of smaller boulders. Um, that have been pushed up from Holocene type storms but but the um, the volumes of these typically range there are typically about 10 cubic meters um, the largest being about 90 cubic meters whereas the um, the volumes of the larger um, boulders um, that that were put in place about the 118, 119,000 years ago, because they're sitting on what they're sitting on has been dated to that age, whereas the actual age of the boulders themselves is about the 400,000 years or something. So, so this is very, very strong evidence on these coastlines that there were extremely large um, storms that were occurring. Now, we often have large storms, you know, what we call super storms um, in in the in the shoulder seasons, for example, fall and spring, or even in the winter, which come across into the eastern U.S., dumping huge amounts of snow. Um, but uh, these type of storms, you know, are basically insignificant compared to the storms that can be generated um, by the, uh, you know, with with different regions having different o ocean temperatures. You know, uh, these storms were much, much larger in the Eemian and we could be heading to this type of thing um, as, as uh, you know, this, this uh, century um, in the next, uh, say, 50 years even, you know, give, you know if the sea level rises as, as much as, as we expect it to. So, so uh, I'll, uh, I think I'll end there and thank you.